Welcome back to Yes, I'm Adopted, Don't Make It Weird. We're going to continue our discussion of the six hurdles from Beneath the Masks. And this week, we're going to be talking about the adoptee concept of difference. So, Devo, <laughs> what does it mean to be different? What does it mean to be different? Fred? Do we like to be different? We do now. I mean, yeah. I think we do now. Now There's, I like being the anomaly. It's, it's funny to talk about, <laughs> like, the... The adoption studies and then like we've done generational studies for some right. of our work and stuff like that you know <laughs> and so to be like I'm a millennial I'm a special snowflake uh... love me and shower me with with praises but also to be like I'm an adoptee and I don't want to feel different at all ever and just I just want to fit in, in to right. all of the things <laughs> right yep. like uh, it's it's okay so difference is funny because we are fundamentally different Yes. Than almost everything that we're raised around, right? <laughs> so uh, you were raised in here in Michigan around white people. All the white people ever. Right? I was raised in, uh, in Colorado around mostly white people. And... Uh, so, I mean, the difference is pretty easy to spot, right? Yeah. Like, we've, we've talked about that on the channel before about um, uh, kids. Yep. As, as kids take it upon themselves to point out every difference. Every single little difference. And, uh... Did you know your eyes look different? <laughs> so there you go. Do you know your face looks different? Uh, no. no. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> I do now. Oh, I can't thanks, unknow it. Thanks for bringing it up. It's I mean, like the I... glass shatters. And right? Just, your eyes are open. Oh my gosh, I'm different! <laughs> ah! I thought it was Not black this whole time! <laughs> Man! <laughs> Being different. Now, um, again, like, you know, as, as adoptees, like, we, we've talked about this before, but we're going to kind of hit on it again. Adoptees are real good at figuring out ways to just fit into the crowd, to not be noticed by anything happening. I could just disappear like this. Ready? Ah! <laughs> That's not funny. That was so cheesy. <laughs> that was so cheesy. We're never doing that. That that's, was so cheesy. That's terrible. <laughs> uh, but we're, we're so good at just fitting in with the background, just being a wallflower. And so, because we don't want to stand out. However, as we get older, we want to be able to make our mark on the world and all the stuff. And, and we've talked about that. Like, let's take this into two parts, right? Mm -hmm. Let's start with the moms. Let's talk to the moms. Okay. And then let's talk to the adoptees. Because I know mostly we have moms on here. Fellow adoptees that are watching, welcome. We are so glad you guys are here. Stick around because we were going to talk to you in a second. But let's talk to the moms. Okay. As, as a kid... <laughs> what are you going to say to the moms? I'm going to yell at them. Oh. I'm going to yell at the moms. Maybe don't do that. No, I'm not going to yell at the moms. Okay. They'll yell at me. <laughs> I'm afraid of the moms. Then, you know. Uh, <laughs> but so what can a mom or I guess what can a parent do um, with their kid who's having a hard time fitting in? <laughs> Because, you know, like, they're, they're going to go through that weird, awkward, especially teenage, adolescent years mm -hmm. where they're hormonal and not understanding where their place in the world is anymore. And they're going to feel different among their friends and all this stuff. So what could a parent do to kind of help circumvent or not necessarily circumvent, but uh, either prepare or repair uh, a lot of these situations? I don't know that there is a repair. Maybe not. There right? probably isn't. But like to to say again, like most of what we do, most of what we talk about is just bringing up the concept that like, hey, this is coming. Like right. heads up, uh, your kid. Like all kids feel weird and awkward during adolescence, right? Yes. Like like so go awkward. talk to any kid between the ages of like twelve and seventeen, and they're all just real awkward. <laughs> all of them, regardless. <laughs> of, you know who you are. That, like, all of you, you're really awkward, and we've <laughs> we've talked to some of you, and that that's still true. You know, we're still awkward, so. <laughs> and we're awkward now, but we've learned to be okay with that for the most part. But like most kids, want to to be a part of something, exactly. want to fit into something. My favorite thing is 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 the kids that like really try to set themselves apart and be different, but they wear the same things that are the same that's, things that's that all trending. the different people are yep. doing. Like yep. the uh, what's the I you there was a kid that was wearing a shirt that said you look at me funny because I'm different and I look at you because you're all the same uh -huh. but the kid next to him was wearing the same shirt <laughs> and uh 
So you're not edgy anymore. <laughs> you're like, there's not... You're not edgy anymore. There, there's irony there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's fantastic, you know? Um, but, like, most most kids want to fit into something when, when they're... Uh, in that age, but right. as adoptees, it's like almost a pathology, right? Like yeah. we're like, I I am so hyper aware of yep. every single difference and everything that makes me, and even things that aren't different that I feel different about, right? right? Um, that they can be, it can be debilitating. Like I won't leave the house wearing a shirt that I think other people are going to notice. Yes. Right. I will now, Man, but like I, as a kid, I would I refuse to wear graphic shirt tees. Right, like I'll I'll do this, like you know, like I got I got my step shirt on, which is about as much color as I wear. Right, like I I literally just bought this hat. This is a plain black hat. <laughs> it's plain black. There's I, nothing I, on it. I didn't want anything on it. I like black. If you can't tell, I like to wear lots of black. Mm. Because I just kind of, like, I've always, okay, so my, my working relationship, I've always wanted to be Batman. I always just wanted to be behind the scenes with everything that I did. Mm. Uh, and now I'm sitting in front of a camera for lots of people to watch and critique and tell me off. And judge you. It's great. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> but, like, uh, okay, so, that I mean, there's a story that we can talk about. Like, in middle school and high school, I don't think I ever wore a, a shirt with any words on it. Because I didn't want anybody to, to read my shirt, right. right? Like I don't want people looking at me right. at all. Yeah, um, no, that makes sense. Which I don't is, think I did really either, right? Which is funny because we're also performers, so like yes. I. But it's a control issue. I want to control when people look at me. Yeah, and they see me doing something that I've practiced and I'm really great oh, at. Oh yes, and you have to be you practiced know? at it. You uh, have to have perfection. <laughs> but if I'm not, if it's not that scenario, then don't look at me. I'm just going to blend in. It's cool. Right. Right. Uh, which leads to an interesting. Uh, idea with adoptees which is this they call it the chameleon effect essentially yep. where um physically there's not a whole lot i can alter right there's not a whole yep. lot i can change physically aside from like my clothes and stuff but uh as far as like how i interact and what my personality is like every adoptee i've ever met has this where we can mold whatever it is our reactions are or our tone of voice or facial expressions so and all these other things to fit exactly the scenario that we're in yeah make you think that i am going to be your best friend you won me over we did it <laughs> it's terrible here we are, and now I sound like you, or I look like you, or I'm doing the thing, you know. Which um, brings up the concept that we've always talked about here, that orphans or adoptees just make the best spies. So, moral of this story yeah. is, <laughs> we're spies and we shouldn't have a channel on the internet. <laughs> uh, I mean, so, okay, when, when I started getting older, though, um, I started getting into my punk phase yes now this granted like this is during the time when other people were doing it too so it was kind of trending um where you know like the baggy jeans and the chain wallets and the choker necklaces the, the pictures and... are hilarious <sighs> they're terrible we should find some no we're never gonna find any of those pictures here. they're never going anywhere uh <laughs> But, like, during that time, like, I, I wanted to be edgy. I wanted to um, kind of just embrace that, I guess, because mm. I was angsty, and sure. I was angry at the world for no reason whatsoever. Uh -huh. um, and during that time is when I really started to want to stand out. Now, in middle school, I was, I was in the back. Mm -hmm. Like, I played, I played defense in goalie, in hockey, and in soccer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because I wanted to be in the back. I didn't want to score. Yeah. I didn't want to be the one, like, you know, like, the people would celebrate and be like, yeah, way to go, Brett. So, like, that wasn't me. I just, I wanted to kick the ball every once in a while, and that was about it. And I wasn't even good at that. That's why I got all the sportsmanship <laughs> awards. I wasn't good at it. You participated. Yeah, way to job. go, me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good time for you to be alive then, because our whole generation is, is built on... <laughs> Participation awards. <laughs> Boo! It's terrible. Ribbons, everybody. Yay. Here you go. Take a ribbon. <laughs> so I don't know. Like, we talk about this and we talk about, like, parenting us during that time. Just be aware that your your kids maybe don't want to stand out. So, yes. like, uh, I, fashion choices, I think let them choose, right? Unless yep. it's got some ridiculous thing on it which you probably won't just let the kid wear whatever they you know they feel like they want to wear in order to fit in right to take your point the, one of the byproducts of this this desire to not be seen 
really, or to not feel different, is that um, we don't try new things. No. <laughs> <laughs> New things are terrifying, guys. Gosh. <laughs> because <laughs> part of the part of the path to proficiency is looking stupid. Yes. Right? And so if I'm going to look wanna... stupid, I'm not going to start. I don't want to look stupid. No. <laughs> uh, I want to know everything that's going to happen. I want to have all expectations. Okay, for instance, I, I, want, to, I want to breakfast with some friends this morning. Uh, we, we went and hung out and, you know, we were just going to this new restaurant I've never been to. Well, one of them started hyping it up a lot. They're like, oh, it's so good. I needed to know what to expect. So the very first thing I did, I went to Google and looked up the menu Uh because I wanted to be able to order as soon as I got there. Right. I did not want to have to sit there and wait and inconvenience the person that was there, first of all. Uh And I wanted to know exactly what to expect. And how to pronounce it. Exactly. How to pronounce it. <laughs> oh, that's an important one. <laughs> but I, did, I didn't want to feel different. I wanted to feel like I belonged there at the restaurant, like I've been there before. Mm-hmm. I don't need special treatment or anything like that. I just want to fit in. And it's something that, you know, like I didn't realize until we just, like just now, now, right this minute, mm-hmm. like that I did that uh, this morning when I went. I was like, okay, I need to know what's happening. Right. Um, and you don't want to stand out. No, I don't at all. Right. <laughs> and, and I guess, you know, like I was going to say, like, you know, like as, as an adult, it's like, you know, I don't mind standing out, but I really don't like to stand out still. Right. What? Well, as, okay. So as, I don't mind it, but to the adoptees then let's talk about to the adoptees. To us, as, to, to us as adults, the issue at hand is I really still don't like to stand out. Uh, anybody that's been following us for a while knows that I'm one of the most private people yeah. like ever, right? <laughs> I rarely will say my last name on camera. I never talk about my family. Like, right. there's, there's a ton of stuff. If you've friended me on Facebook and I haven't accepted, don't take it personally. <laughs> I, j- I don't friend anybody on Facebook. Like, It's my- true. It's true. <laughs> it took me years to accept his Yeah, thing. he's, he's and, rarely on it. You're not missing anything. You maybe snuck on my computer and did it yourself that's possible yeah, no i want to throw a pass I, that, it's possible <laughs> right like i'm a i'm an extremely private person right. in my in my private life but when it comes to these things when it comes to being uh to being different and, and embracing that yep. it's because we choose to we choose to right like okay so this this is a funny story now we just started our instagram first of all if you haven't checked it out go go here go check out the instagram because it's it's I mean, there's nothing it's, on it's it. It's got really five right now. posts on it. Now. Yeah, it's got five. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we're just starting out. So I posted a video of uh, Devo swinging on that. And the first message I got from him is like, thanks for posting that thanks, stupid video of me for, looking dumb. <laughs> thanks for making me look like a jerk. <laughs> like a, and you'll notice that nobody nobody that's like related to us is in that video. Right? <laughs> yep, exactly. Nobody. It's it's other people. And it's hilarious to me because, you know, like he's he's very private in that. And and I, I told him, I was like, dude, I needed content. I needed to throw something out there. I hate it. Yeah, he does, which is kind of entertaining to me but i mean we need to be able to control the situation we need to be able to control um what it is that we're doing like we're we're musicians right Right. and we hated performing in front of people if we didn't feel like it was perfect you just wouldn't do it did you ever do talent shows when you when you were younger no okay (laughs) (laughs) me neither because you have to try out yes (laughs) yes and you have to have people judge you. Right? And people have to decide you, whether or not your act is good, good enough. enough. I hate that. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I never I never did anything. So mm. I, I did one competition. And mm. the only reason I did it is because they needed a drummer. Right. And um and I was I was there. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so it was a you know, a group of other people and you know, we won, thankfully, and got to move on and stuff, but yeah. But I mean, I, I, oh, I hated stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And to this day, I still hate stuff like that. Okay, but this is funny. As adults, we've gotten very well practiced at winging it. Yes. Right? But, but that it, was intentional. But it's practiced. We're pretty good at just being like, ask questions and we'll answer them and do the thing because we've we've been really intentional about and having we've those We've talked about all those answers right? already. Uh, and if you ask something that we weren't prepared for, we'd probably freak out. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> or just skip past it and just, right? oh, I didn't see that one. That didn't happen. You know. Uh, 
<laughs> yep. But again, uh, it's it's preparation. It's wanting to stand out on our own terms. Uh, you're going to find a common theme in a lot of these things is is control. It's yes. wanting to have control, and that's so far that's been true with almost every different facet that we've talked about as far as uh, these adoption issues and hurdles. And you're yep. going to see that as a theme going forward. Yeah. So, um, it, long and short, as kids. Don't force your kids to look different if they right. don't prepare or want to. As or, adults, yeah. reframe. Yep. Oh, well, that's it. <laughs> okay. That was easy. <laughs> so next week, we're going to be continuing the discussion going over the six different hurdles that the book talks about. Um, this is honestly like super good information, not just for parents, but for adoptees, because we need to be able to take time and actually process a lot of the stuff ourselves. One of the biggest things that we get from people is, oh, I didn't recognize that in myself. Um, so take the time, honestly, like go through, go through the literature, talk to people, ask questions, and then take time to just sit by yourself and process. Take that time, be very intentional to think about everything that we've talked about, everything that the books talk about, and just see how it applies to yourself. Like that's, that's some of the biggest advice that we can give. Uh, be very intentional with that stuff. So thank you guys so much for joining us on today's episode of Yes, I'm Adopted. Don't make it weird. We are going to be coming out with merch and stuff here very soon. We are designing mugs and hats to go on my blank black hat, possibly some t-shirts. I'm really excited. I got a couple things in the works. Yeah. He, he hasn't seen all of it yet, so. No. He's going to be surprised. I hate that. It's going to be bright pink. Bright pink at me. I won't be buying any <laughs> at all. So make sure you guys like, comment, share, and subscribe. We will see you guys next week. Thanks again for joining us. Cheers. That's my new outro. That's what you're going with? Yeah, cheers. Just yeah. Cheers. No. Just cheers me! <laughs> Just cheers me! No! <laughs> <laughs>